You know, I always think about that picture where it looks like two people kissing or like a glass of champagne. Like I'm, you know, like the flute. I'm so fascinated by perspective. Like adversity either crumbles you or becomes foundational to your success. You got your perspective. Well, I'll also tell you this, and this is something just at a much higher level. You find yourself in change positions because life is only change. There is no, it stops. <laughs> like, there is only, there's only one constant, that things are always changing. And so, you know, you, you may perceive them as not changing, but they're changing. Things are moving at all times. My grandmother is crying because of your lack of subscribing yeah. to my YouTube channel. Can't you just subscribe? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Too good. laughs> I don't have the key to the LA office. <laughs> Hi, my name is Matthew Avella. I directed the Netflix documentary, Minimalism. I'm curious, for people who are trying to find meaning in life, to, to live a meaningful life, what would you say to them? I think a couple things, you know, this, it's a very heavy question. I think people, first of all, have to give a lot more thought to the environment and the parents that raised them. There's a lot of answers in there, like a lot. Uh, so that's interesting to me, that's just one hot take. I believe one of the great ways to mix things up is what you listen to and who you surround yourself with. Um, I would, I'm unbelievably passionate about people finding more optimistic, practical friends. And I, and I think optimism gets, can, get, can slide into delusion which is why I say optimistical, practical. You know, uh, it's funny, as you were talking about minimalism, like I didn't, it, it's so interesting that you're the first person to ever say it to me that I can recall, and it feels very real to me. Like I don't have outside things kind of driving me, and that's what leads me to a lot of happiness. And so I, I would say auditing your circle. Like if somebody wants a meaningful life, live a live meaningful life, leave, just get happier. I think the people that you spend your time with is a big one. The amount of people listening right now who've got a mother who's super pessimistic and cynical but they love their mother and they don't realize that cutting down their time from seven hours a week of engagement with their mother to two and adding, like going out of their way to seeing the person that's always smiling in the office and trying to spark up a friendship and become friends with that person and cutting up that seven hours a week from mom to two to mom, maybe 30 minutes with that person and maybe reallocating the other hours to themselves or other things is a massive deal. It's a massive deal. Like, there's only offense and defense. There's only the force and the dark side, right? And I think that um, right now people are, are, a lot of people are choosing to be driven by fear and negativity without realizing it. And so if you're listening right now, my biggest thing is start leaning into a little bit more of optimism and positivity. I think where it overcorrects is when it goes into delusion and that's when you start creating entitlement. And that is the tightrope that I've been talking about, thinking about, watching. Um, and it's, I, I create entitlement a lot of times because I like positivity. Mm. And it took me a little while, maybe 20 or 30 years, 20 years of operating and managing and parenting and being like, okay, I can, I can see this, but I'm, not, but I'm a product of not having entitlement. I kind of fell into customizing all by accident. My cousin asked me if I could fix his shoes, did more research, saw that art was being done on shoes, and that's how I got to where I'm at today. Like, the consumerization of like America and like what people deem a success is something I've been thinking about a ton. Like, a t it's super on my mind. Like there was no reason for you to having to go broke again. Yeah. It just you bought dumb shit. Yeah. Because that's the culture. Yeah, I was young, dumb. I yep. was I was seeing people do it and I thought I totally I'd be understand. All right. I wasn't worried about the next 
10 steps ahead. Of course not. Um, but I feel like everything that I've gone through to today has been very valuable in my success now. Only know? because you've been able to build on top of it. Absolutely. Like adversity either crumbles you or becomes foundational to your success. It's insane. I, you know, I always think about that picture where it looks like two people kissing or like a glass of champagne. Like I'm, you know, like the flute. I'm so fascinated by perspective. The amount of people who decide in your situation when you hurt your back that see, see, it was just about to get good, but God took it away from me and just give up is a lot. Absolutely. I mean that. And then people who like go into a wheelchair because they're paralyzed and decide that's the platform that they're gonna use to like change the world. I'm just so fascinated by the perspective. Yeah, it's, it's really crazy. And then, you know, I went through that. There were literally people today, Worldstar picked up a clip that I posted about me doing a garage sale flip. How much are cars? Oh, sorry. 25 uh, to 50. 25 to 50. Got it. I'm just thinking way less. For 10 Honestly, bucks. you gotta go up to 40. I'll do that. I think it's fair. Because they're hard to get yeah. rid of. Yes. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, my man. Wish you well. Take care of yourself. Destroyed their faces. It's at least a hundo. And literally people are like going in there. Yeah. And people are going in there flaming me and saying, you're ripping people off. And I'm fascinated by perspective. Like I'm just fascinated by people's ability to deploy cynicism. Good question, Gary. I'm 17 right now. Out in LA interning for them. Thanks. I know my value. How do I make other people see it beyond the monetary gain, if there is none? You just ask and you don't dwell on somebody not seeing it. It just becomes a matter of time. And if you don't feel like somebody's paying you or seeing the value, you just find the next person to have the conversation with. You know? Yeah. All right. You can't force somebody that you want to see something to see something. You either decide to stay the course and give a discount in however you define the discount because you want to do it for that person. Like if I want Mike Tyson to think I'm the coolest, then I can work for him for free for five years until he does or I can be like, fuck you Mike Tyson, I'm going to work for Evander Holyfield. I got you. Got it? Yeah, you'll be seeing me soon. Good man, take care. Yeah. My name is Kalito and I live in LA. I make music. Good to see you. I'm so glad we made this. Sit, sit, sit. How you doing? I'm good. What's been going on? Uh, Seems like things are going well. Things are going well. <laughs> Working really hard. Yep. But things are well. Um, I've just been making music. I'm where? Um, you don't make music in English? Because it naturally happens that way or thoughtfully you wanted to go about it that way? I thoughtfully wanted to go about it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. But also, and naturally, also, you know, it's my first language. Yeah, like, like if you go in the booth or if you like go musical, does it like, like you think Spanish. in Spanish? Yeah. It, the reason I wanted to ask you that right away was it's kind of like, I think a lot of the reason some of my content goes viral mm -hmm. is because I think in Russian and there's a lot Are of- Russian? Yeah, I was born in Russia. What? Yeah, in Belarus specifically. And I think in Russian and so a lot of sayings and things I think are trans, I'm translating them from a Russian standpoint to English uh -huh. and they haven't been said that way in English even though they're things that, you know? Yeah. Like my favorite saying that some, my grandma used to say was, you can't put your ass on two toilets, which was basically like don't get stretched thin. Yeah. So like when I like sometimes make content, I'll, I could say that and everyone's like, that's insane! But they just have never heard that and that, it's all the same shit that, like all these sayings in every language are the same yeah. Like trying to make the same point, yeah, but the yeah. analogies are different. Yeah. And so I think a lot of my analogies are unique because I'm not well read and because I think in Russian. And so what, as I've been listening to your stuff and then like, and then just like hearing you talk right now and I'm like, huh, I wonder if she, when she's creative, thinks in Spanish and that's why that happens. I mean, definitely that's part of it, but also I definitely Opportunity. Wanna represent where I'm from. Yeah, so I get that. <laughs> that's also another reason why. Yeah, I get it. So I'm, I'm basically at this point in my, in my life and my career where it's like um, everything I've made, I've just made scrapped. Out of my own, scrapped, just like out of my own pocket, like, yep. you know, I have a day job still. Like, yep, work, like, save, exactly. invest in your career. Exactly. But um, so I'm just like in that 
like we're talking to a couple of labels, but like that hasn't happened and we're taking our time with that and I want to put some music out because I feel like- You want leverage. The longer, exactly, the longer I wait, the more leverage I have. 100%. I can ask for. God, God, will, like God willing, something gets small. crazy yeah. and pops, you've got, all, you've got much more leverage. Exactly. So I I'm understand. Just kinda, that is the model. Yeah, I'm just like- That's the beauty of today's I'm not world. I'm anything until like- cause You I, feel it. I know my worth. And yep. Like, I feel like I'm worth more than and, and you know what? And you know what's funny? Like a lot of times people are like, I know my worth. You're being actually more thoughtful than that. You're putting yourself in a position to allow the market to establish your worth. Yeah. Everybody knows their worth. The amount of pe- there's millions of people running around saying I know my worth and never do anything because the market doesn't give them the leverage to create worth. Mm. What I like about what you're doing is you're not sitting in your room ideologically saying I know my worth. You're putting in work to get money to put yourself in a position, right. you're doing it the right way. Thank you. No, it's real, I mean <laughs> it. No, I mean it, I mean it. Like, yeah. I think I know my worth is like when people always say like, I'm not willing to work for free, I know my worth. And I'm like, mm. you have ego. Mm. Like you have, you're winning, you're building a foundation on humility. Mm-hmm. You're actually working and I'm sure, you know, I'm not sure, but I assume you need to have a job that gives you flexibility so you're probably not making a billion dollars a year. No. Working part time, and that's like exactly. Lucky, you know that when I found this, situation, I found yep. This. And so, like, I just, w- I just wish more youngsters would follow your blueprint. Mm-hmm. People are just not willing to eat shit, and and like, it's just entitlement. Mm-hmm. Everybody just decided they're the best rapper in the world, and they just leave comments on rappers' Instagrams and be like, "You haven't heard me yet. I'm the best. Cool. Show me." People do that shit to me, and I'm of like, course. "What?" <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, I'm... like it's called, it's called. SoundCloud and Spotify, like you have distribution. Yeah. If you're so good, show me. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Everyone's talking. Good, good for you. Awesome. That's exactly right. That's the way to do it. Every single artist in the world should build leverage. I taught myself photography. In 2007, people started hiring me. So much so that by 2008, I was traveling the world. Such a pleasure. Nice to meet you. Such a pleasure. Hello. We actually met in May of 2000. Uh, 17 at uh, the four days event. I have to say thank you because that event changed my life. How so? You inspired me to start something new in my business. And a couple months later, I launched a brand new product in my business, Social Curator, which is a monthly social media membership. Uh, And we provide 30 lifestyle photos, 30 caption templates to help people talk about their business without selling their business. And then an action plan in a community. And within 12 months, we created a seven-figure revenue stream in the business. That's so awesome. we took what we learned, started applying it, and I just have to say thank you because it's not about the business. Like you empowered me to be me. So thank you. It's You're awesome. Welcome. It's an awesome. So, that makes me happy. Uh, if that's all I get to say to you, like it's totally worth it. So we currently have uh, 6,000 members, and we're on trend to reach 10,000 by the end of 2018. And so. We have a community and I asked the community, hey, what would you guys like to see next? And the thing that we heard the most is that people want a social curator app because I can see it. they want to remove the friction from taking the resources that we provide for them and pushing it to their social platforms. And then things got a little bit tricky because when I started asking what features do you find the most valuable in an app if you were to create one, the number one thing was we want to organize, plan, and schedule our posts, but we want to use these resources. If I were to create an app, that service their primary demands or requests, it would put me squarely in the organizational planning app space, which is a totally different business model than what I currently have. So my question to you is if you were me, would you create the app or would you like triple down on the investment, that the time and the cost to create an app that's a slightly different business model than what we currently have and puts us squarely in a different type of app space? Um, the, my first read is I'd probably consider to quadruple down on what's already working and go from 6,000 to 60,000 and use that leverage of even 6,000 to probably JV with an organizing app that creates some sort of relationship. I, I think that people need to be thoughtful about what they're good at and then be even more thoughtful about what doesn't come as natural or what they may not be as interested in. Focus on like I would say position. in power based on that, I would say consider finding an app partner that already does what you're thinking about building and say to them, you call up Charlie and say, Hey Charlie, I have six thousand fucking people paying me. Yeah. And they want this. I don't necessarily want to do it. 
How's your business going? You don't know what's out there. Do you know how many apps? I'll give you one. I would look at the bottom 50 apps in the space. I'll tell you why. They might have, they might have, do you know how many app guys and girls are out there that make 600 apps? And this is one of them that they made and they actually built a really good product but they're focused on the one that popped and you can like swoop up and take the technology for 5,000 bucks. You have to explore. I think you should look at the bottom 50 apps. I have a funny, yeah, I have a funny feeling. Think about it, right? And you're saying to acquire? You might be able to. Like if you think about it, it's a bot, you know, you, yeah. you look at top 10, right? You go to, they have leverage because they're top 10 for a reason. Right. You go to number 83, number 83 might be a better app than top 10. The person's just not working it. I'm unbelievably passionate about people finding more optimistic, practical friends. And I'm fascinated by perspective. Like I'm just fascinated by people's ability to deploy cynicism and so like I just, I just wish more youngsters would follow your blueprint.